I was studying to be a medic in the Canadian Army Reserve while taking care of my grandpa in hospitals here in Saskatchewan with my family. My grandpa had multiple chronic conditions, and he had a few very serious slip-ups in his care, one of them being a misdiagnosis that led to an emergency surgery. Fortunately, he made it through the surgery, but you could see how the whole ordeal weighed on him from a physical, mental, and emotional perspective. The toll was immense. A few months later, we lost him. In the most sudden and devastating way, the very complication signaled by that blood in his urine caught up with him. And before we even had a chance to say goodbye, he passed away. Me and my family grieved the loss of my grandfather. But in my grief, I couldn't shake the feeling that the very complication signaled by that blood in his urine caught up with him far too, far too early. In my grief, me and my family grieved my grandfather's loss. And in my grief, I promised myself that I would spend the rest of my life working in healthcare so that no other family would have to experience what ours did. And that drive brought me here today. Today, I want to share with you a solution to the very problems experienced in my grandfather's care as I believe a tool to fundamentally change healthcare for the better is artificial intelligence. Not as a replacement for care, but as a support at the bedside to the people who are providing it. As AI, used wisely and ethically, can help prevent tragedies like what occurred with my grandfather from ever happening again. This enormous stack of papers is a replica of my grandpa's medical chart. Can you imagine a healthcare worker meeting my grandpa or your family for the first time would have to understand all this information? On top of that, in a typical 15-minute appointment with a doctor, seven and a half minutes is dedicated to in-person time, and seven and a half minutes is dedicated to charting. In that sliver of time, could your family's medical history really be understood? To me, I thought, it's impossible. Could, could they really understand my full grandpa's medical history in that sliver of time? On top of that, burnout and staffing shortages in healthcare have reached crisis levels. In Canada, in 2022, there were 120,000 unfilled healthcare jobs. You've experienced this if you've ever waited for hours in an emergency room to receive care. On top of that, one in five nurses plan to leave the profession by 2027 due to stress and burnout. You've experienced this if you've ever waited to go get into a clinic, see a specialist, or have life-altering surgery. This is, this is a real issue. And although the crisis is everywhere, the cracks run deepest in rural, remote, and indigenous communities. In those communities, between 2018 in 2023, there's been a 24% decline in the amount of nurses. That's 526 fewer nurses. And doctors are facing record levels of exhaustion, too. You've experienced this if you've ever seen a facility on bypass or closed, as these vacancies can last months, if not years. Currently, today, in my hometown, that facility is on bypass. So here we are, caregivers with too little time and too much information, working in a system on the brink of collapse under the weight of its own paperwork. The outcome? Mistakes happen. Like what happened with my grandfather. Although the care providers were trying their best, the system set them up to fail because the tools they were given. If we want different results, we have to fix the tools not the people. And if we can fix the tools, we can fundamentally change healthcare. So I set out on a quest to find those tools. What I found was an AI medical scribe. An AI medical scribe? An AI medical scribe is basically a digital assistant who listens to the doctor-patient conversation and charts for you in real time. 
It's basically like an invisible secretary who never gets tired, never misses a detail, and frees the doctor up to focus on you. I immediately thought of a close friend of mine, a family physician who'd been drowning in charting. He would regularly take charts home with him after a day of work, put his kids to bed, and then work on them into the night, day after day after day. His charting burden was immense. And we'd always been thinking of healthcare solutions. So I brought this one up to him. And you know what he did? He took it upon himself to apply it. Then we watched what happened. It was nothing short of a eureka moment. Within weeks, he went from being behind on charts to being one of the most efficient in the clinic. He spent more time with patients, and patients spent less time in the waiting room. On top of that, he was done his notes on time, and they were more detailed. AI never missed a thing. And it's not just doctors. Nurses, therapists, technicians, they're all getting bogged down by forms, charting, notes. AI can help them too. And this isn't sci-fi, and it's not going to occur tomorrow. We can do this today. Currently, we're applying AI technology in our rural and remote communities. What that is allowing is a higher level of care to be provided in our rural, remote, and indigenous communities. That higher level of care is perhaps preventing people from having a long trip to the city, bridging the rural-urban healthcare divide. In addition, AI isn't just for the clinic. It's being applied in people's homes. AI remote patient monitoring systems are alerting care teams of issues before they become emergencies. By weaving technology into virtual care, that's how we ensure you get timely, effective medical attention no matter where you live. That's what I mean by a change. For that appointment, when we apply AI to that appointment that was previously seven and a half minutes in person and seven and a half minutes uh, of charting time, what AI can change that to is just simply three minutes of charting time and the rest focused on you. Which appointment would you rather have? One where the doctor's nose is buried in paperwork or one where they give you their full attention? The answer is obvious. These are the style of tools that we can apply into healthcare today to make things better. It's truthfully not about pushing healthcare workers to work even harder. They're already at their limit. But by offloading the drudgery to machines that don't mind doing it. That's how we start to fix the tools, not the people. But I know what everyone's thinking. This all sounds great, but is it safe? We've all seen AI making mistakes in healthcare, in working with an AI chatbot, and we can't trust our health information on some random server. Our healthcare data is critical, and in essence, you all own all of your healthcare data. So we need something safe and effective for it. What we can do to build that is to create medical-grade AI. Three key principles, local, closed, and unlearning. Local, if you have care provided here, your data is stored here. Two, closed, it's not searching the entire internet, it's only sticking to your data. And three, unlearning, if we control the learning process, then we can have a safe, effective assistant. That's what I mean by medical-grade AI. No random, uh, bringing up random information, no bizarre improvisations, just a clear, safe, efficient AI. What that allows is for this chart and the 10 more of them seen in a sea of filing cabinets, the AI can make sure we understand all of it. What this allows is to understand all the contraindications in a chart. It allows us to make sure we see all the rare medical conditions. And for the care team, it allows a nice, easy, simple to read summary for them. That's how we fix the tools in healthcare. I started with my grandfather's story, and I want to end with a vision. A vision for the future where caregivers feel empowered, not overwhelmed. Where, where technology supports care providers, not replaces them. Where AI handles the paperwork, and people handle the caring. Imagine walking into a hospital or clinic, the doctor, the nurse, 
the therapist. They catch your attention and give you their full attention while you give yours to them. While an AI quietly listens, you feel heard, you feel understood, no detail is missed. That's a reality we can attain today. Everyone, caregivers are not to blame. Caregivers are working hard, and truthfully, they should be thanked for what they're doing. What the problem is, is with the tools they have been given. If we want alternate results, we have to fix the system, focus it on care and compassion, not policy and paperwork. Fix the tools, not the people. My grandfather's past can't be changed. But we can change the future for others if we have the will to act. Decades ago, right here in Saskatchewan, the seeds of universal Medicare were planted by people with the will to act. Now let's reimagine that. Let's fix the tools and let's let caregivers care. Thank you.